Before I was abducted, I had a perfect childhood. I was 10 years old when I met Robert Birchtold, his wife and his five children at church. Robert did give me special attention that he didn't give to the others. I wasn't a mature 12-year-old. I looked like I was about eight years old. I was a pleaser. I had the right personality to be manipulated. In 1974, he handed me my allergy pill because I was going to be around horses. After I took the pill, I woke up in the back of a moving motor home and my arms and my legs were strapped to the back of the bed. I was drugged. I was in and out of a very, very deep sleep. For the next five weeks, I was missing. This is when the sexual abuse began. The FBI located us in Mexico. Robert's wife asked my parents to drop all of the charges because he hadn't hurt me. He had become our family's best friend. And I was telling my parents and everyone that he didn't hurt me, but I had been brainwashed. My family continued to have a relationship with Robert and his family. In 1976, Robert showed up at my back bedroom window, helped me out of the window, put me in his black Continental, and took me to California. I was missing for almost four months. I thought life might return to normal when I got home, but it didn't. When I finally got home, I walked right past my mom, no feelings, no tears, completely detached. My family asked me what had happened, tried to get me to talk, and all I would say is, I want to marry Robert Birchtold, I want to be with him. Well, Jan, thank you for being here, and thank you for having the courage to talk about all of this. This is such a cautionary tale for people Obviously, you were groomed, your family was groomed leading up to this. Talk about that and how that happened. The first time that we actually met them were at church. And as we began a relationship, a friendship, he had such an affable, charming, charismatic personality that he would show up at the back door and open our back door. We didn't lock our doors, you know, small town, Pocatello, Idaho, and right. he'd yell into the house, it's going to be a great day. And that's how we'd start our day. And we'd run up the stairs. My dad was usually on the piano because that's how he woke us up. And we'd jump in the car with Robert Birchtold and his own kids and he'd drive us all to school. He became like my second father. Do you think that he, he targeted you immediately when he moved into the neighborhood? I do. I think that he immediately knew that I fit the exact thing that he wanted. I was very petite. It was going to be years before I hit puberty. And I was a people pleaser. I was good with adults, I liked people, I wanted to please them, and that personality made it, uh, made me, I think, an easy target. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and I think what people, it's so hard sometimes because the people that are closest around families, the ones that are most helpful, are the ones that are the typical offenders, and they hide in plain sight, right? Because yes. there are so many that help that really are nice people that are helping, and they hide among those nice people.